But first, counting is already underway in Chad after a landmark presidential election that will end three years of military rule. Now, it's the first of several junta-led nations in the Sahel to hold a democratic polls after coups that also erupted in Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger since 2020. Now, junta leader Mohamed Idris Deby is one of 10 candidates in the running and says that he is committed to the return of constitutional order. He was proclaimed transitional president after his father, the former president, Idris Deby, was killed in 2021. Now, Mohamed Deby's opponents have already slammed the exercise, calling it a sham, engineered to extend three decades of Deby rule. His main rival is Prime Minister Suksi Mazra, but there are some suspicions that he may not be completely committed to the pursuit of victory. Our Claire Pacalin has been following the day for us in Jamina. Claire, so how are things looking from where you are? Giorgio, I'm here with Professor Dominique Ciudina from the University of N'Djamena. You're a lecturer, full-time lecturer in cultural studies and public policy. And like me, um, Professor has been visiting polling stations today in the capital city. Can you tell me what are your impressions? Yeah, I, I, I did. Uh, this morning I had a chance to go around and visit some of the uh, polling sessions. Uh, my impression is that uh, we have this uh, huge mobilization of the voters, and this is the first time to have people really determined because they were respecting that their vote, you know, their vote, their ballot can count, and this is the reason why. And also it can be, uh, maybe, because during the campaign we have seen some big rallies which uh, result from the message uh, that have been uh, developed by the each challenger and this has convinced people you know to come and then uh, to mobilize for this uh, election this is something new compared to the uh, the different uh, elections that we have here yeah, in past years, we haven't seen that kind of mobilization. The big crowds that came, particularly to the two favorite candidates, Mohamed Idris Deby Itno, or Midi as he's known, yeah. and his prime minister, but his political rival, yeah. Suksi Masara, we saw big, big crowds. What explains that? How did they manage to get so many people to come to their rallies? And, and a lot of young people, too. Yeah, you see both of them, they are, they are still young, so they are full of energy, full of um, determination. Yeah, both candidates are yeah, in their 40s. Yeah, yeah, they are 40s, again. So these are the, 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 the reasons, because look, during the campaign, each of them tried to develop, um, I mean, a, a discourse from the one end. We have uh, Midi, uh, Mamat Idris uh, Debi, who uh, can rely on the support of these uh, allies, more than 200 uh, I mean, political parties that decided to support, you know, his, um, yeah, to support him for this election and then uh, you know uh, MPS is 20 uh, 32 years of power okay so they have this experience and uh, they better know the ground uh, even these uh, voters they somehow have a kind of uh, um, I mean uh, familiarities on the other side we have a uh, success also that tries to develop a you know a discourse because he's close to the population and uh, trying to understand their needs and you see Chad is uh, a poor country and then he's uh, ranked among the uh, corrupted countries in the world. So the message for him is uh, uh, equality, justice and peace. And this, uh, you know, convinced and uh, this is the reason why people really decided because some expected to have a change happening. Because uh, from the one end we have uh, Midi with his experience which developed a discourse of continuity. On the other end, we have uh, Succe, who is trying to develop a kind of, um, you know, uh, the end, and then that we should begin a kind of rebirth, a renaissance, somehow. And when it comes to Chad, as you said, ranked one of the most corrupt countries in the world, coming to this election, we saw some of the candidates, as well as civil rights groups as well, saying the messages just weren't in place to guarantee this is a free, fair, transparent election. What's your take on that? Was this a transparent election? Yeah, here, here is a real challenge because we cannot predict the results, but we have some uh, factors that can maybe uh, create uh, this, uh, I mean, feeling uh, to, to, to not have a fair result. Uh, based on the fact that the members of this uh, agency, they are uh, appointed, don't forget that they are appointed, and uh, most of them, they used to serve the ruling party, or they used to be members or serve this ruling party. So somehow they will be loyal to him, okay? So those who are in charge of 
the smooth running of these elections, the agency in charge of that, yeah. those who were in charge of that agency were actually appointed by the current interim president. So we kind of know who, who their boss is, right? No, is that no, what? no sure if you will have a second round or not. But the fact that, uh, as I said, you know, they use somehow to serve, of course, they will be loyal. And the aim of the ruling party is still to remain, to keep, the, the, to remain in the power. So it will be a real challenge. And uh, the few days will tell us who will be the winner. There's a question mark over that. Obviously, the agency itself, I was speaking to the head of the agency earlier on, he was telling us that, yes, these have been free, fair elections at Transparency. There may have been some irregularities that were noticed today, but for him, they are transparent. But big question marks as to who's running their agencies and who put people in those yeah. jobs. When it comes to the results, we could have a result in the next few days, or it's a maximum 15 days for those first provisional results to be announced. And after that, there could be a second round if no candidate gets a majority. Here we go in Chad and big election day and historic election day. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Professor? Yeah, um, you know, just as a Chadian, my dream is at least to have a fair election and at least for the first time to have these uh, institutions uh, that can guarantee and uh, hope that the better win anyway. And I hope to, to have a fair election for sure. I wish. Tell me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 at least I wish Chad, you know, to give the example of fair election for the first time, at least to the world. And uh, yeah, I'd like to have it, inshallah. Inshallah. And yeah. how positive are you? Are you optimistic? I am, 100%. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. Back to you, Georgia in Paris. Thank you so much, Professor Dominique Asuduna there. And thank you so much for sharing your impressions and breakdown of this important day for Chad as the country goes to vote for its president after three years of military rule.